going live. Ruh -roh. Oh boy, that looks like a different layout. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Okapi. And this is Bvania 2DX Infinitas, which has been around the block lately, um, showing up in marathons. Um, I know that phase has showed it up a couple times lately. Um, I know Sparkovers showed it up a few times as well. Um, so this is going to be a little different, uh, because this is really, really long a thong. This is a game that I've been playing for a really, really long time. I'm not especially good at it, but there's a lot of stuff that kind of fits the really, really theme here. So, we're just gonna kind of get into it. Um, we've got uh, Shinji16 as well, uh, helping out with commentary so I can focus on playing. So, hi Shinji, thanks for turning up at the last minute to help me out with this thing that's happening at the last minute. Oh, welcome, welcome, and greetings everybody. Glad to see some familiar names in chat already. Alright, so I'm gonna let Shinji handle like a lot of the nonsense that's going on as far as commentary. Uh, but we're gonna start off with a, a song that I really, really like. And uh, I see that Decay is already in the chat, and then he's gonna be mad at me for playing Weep Trash. Of Japan, I'm not familiar with a lot of them, but that's just because uh, I haven't really been released outside all that much. However, uh, Dance Dance Revolution is one of those music games, so if you're familiar with that, you might be familiar with some of the songs that we'll be doing in this uh, showcase. Yeah, this game is also infamous for causing imposter syndrome among people who play it, because that was almost a double A, and boy oh boy was that awful. Uh, that's actually Infinitas' fault. Um, any Infinitas player will tell you that this game has the most finicky, drifty time win timing of all time. So, like, it literally changes its mind every time you boot it. So we're gonna drop that down and uh, continue on through the list. Um, Before we uh, jump into the next song, uh, chat is saying that I'm really hard to hear. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to double check uh, the output level. Yeah. Can, can we not hear? Can we not hear Shinji? Okay. Uh, let me, um, let me reboot the game real quick, because I'm going to have to turn Shinji up. And this game is janky. So if I just tab out, it will completely break the game. So let me fix Shinji real quick. Uh, volume mixer. Where you at, Shinji? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I just wouldn't be in Finitas without some sort of technical difficulty, would it? No, it really wouldn't. 
So yeah, oh. just uh. Okay, you are now twice as loud. All right, so hopefully this is uh where I should be. But yeah, one of the reasons uh, Infinitas is a bit jank for timing is because normally 2DX is an arcade game. Um, and as a result, it's made with a very specific computer and graphics card and RAM in mind. Uh, Infinitas? Uh, it is not hardware knows. agnostic. It is not hardware agnostic at all. Like, um, at some point in the recent past, Konami said, hey, you know what, guys? We're going to make this $3,000 computer and you can play all of your rhythm games on it, and it's not a very good computer for the money. But it does seem to work pretty well with all of Konami's games. Meanwhile, you can have an actually two to three thousand dollar computer yourself, and then the week Doom Eternal comes out and a bajillion video drivers updates come out, uh everything goes out the window. <laughs> yes. Or like um that issue that um I was chasing for the last couple of months where my timing just kept getting further and further positive no matter what I did. And the only thing that fixed it was just reinstalling Windows because this game makes literally no sense from a coding standpoint. All right, let's try this again. And unfortunately, uh, having accurate timing is a huge part of this game, uh, whereas a lot of music games, especially in more recent years, um, have very lenient timing windows and are usually more combo focused. Uh, 2DX is one of the older music games and has an extreme focus on accuracy. Uh, the ideal input, uh, similar to like DDR, where you get judged on how good your note was, you know, marvelous, perfect, great, etc. The flashing great in 2DX is a roughly two frame window um, ahead and behind. Alright, the million dollar question is did it screw up my, uh, my timing window? We're just gonna let it happen for right now. I was going to say there's only one way to find out, and that's by trying to slap some more keys. Yeah, we'll play point and call after taking a short break. That's going to go well. Also, this video is amazing. Don't even watch the gameplay. Just watch the VGA. Seriously, the dancer on the right part of the video, she's just so unbelievably happy. It's fantastic. We have some familiar faces in chat from the uh, music game community. Wonderful to see you all here. But for folks that aren't familiar with this game, one thing to keep in mind as a copy's playing, as you see all those flashing greats coming by, every one of those is essentially a roughly two-frame input. Um, 2DX is an extremely difficult game to get into, but it is a game that you can definitely get better at if you're willing to put into practice. Uh, it's one of the reasons why folks continue playing it year after year. It's, it's a very long-term, but very rewarding game to play. take that during a marathon we'll absolutely take new scores and we'll throw on the random remix note at the end uh speaking of really really long um shinji how long have you been playing uh so i've been playing 2dx on and off uh for about 10 years so my first started in the early 2000s and uh i had a couple year hiatuses but yeah roughly about a decade yeah, 
So I have been playing for about 16 years at this point, and I still have a long ways to go. But we're gonna hop into a song from another really, really long running Konami series. We'll play, get some contra music. So speaking about PBs and scores, uh, you might notice that in between the video and then the actual gameplay, uh, there are these rising bars. Uh, that's what we know, uh, what we call the pacemaker. So the red pacemaker is a goal. You can actually change it. You can have it be a specific letter grade. Um, if you have other friends that play this game and you share scores with them, if you have them a, as a rival, as the game would call it, you could have it be your rival's best score for that song. Uh, it can be whatever, really. Uh, the green bar in the middle is your own personal PB, and then the blue bar is your live play uh, that attempt. the end but hey we'll we'll take more pbs absolutely yeah i see cabellia talking in the chat about how exhausting this chart is yeah it's um it's rough uh battle train is one of those songs that just hits the ground running and refuses to let up it's very, very, very rough. Uh, so we're going to jump into more really, really stuff. Um, an artist that is really, really loved by the community. Like, everyone loves Nekomata Master. So. One thing that's great about uh, Nekomata is they also have a very, like, distinctive style. It's not quite house, not quite tribal, just a great mix of lots of different things. It's just good vibe and music. See frosty flowers in the shooting. This gives me anxiety. One thing to, to note, while what Okapi is doing might seem intimidating, uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, this game, the song difficulties are given levels. Uh, they go from level 1 to 12. Uh, right now, Okapi's been played mainly 9s and 10s. For the longest time, the arcade game series had 7s as being cut off for difficulty. Uh, in fact, in the arcades in Japan, if you can pass sevens, uh, that's good enough to warrant getting an extra stage or to possibly go after uh, the unlock system and boss songs. So a lot of what we're seeing here is well beyond what was intended to be considered mastery for the game. It's really mastery for mastery's sake at this point.
And the imposter syndrome sets in once again. That felt awful, and yet it's a pretty decently high double A. Yeah, doing pretty well, especially for, uh, you know, having marathon jitters. Really good work, Okapi. Marathon jitters. <laughs> so, um, I do see Sandwich Cat asking about memorization versus sight reading, and uh, Jamich uh, did respond on that already, but yeah, it is worth mentioning that a lot of this is really just reaction. Um, you might know that a song has um, a lot of scales in it, or it's really chord heavy in one section, but a lot of it is just reacting to what is on screen. Uh, there really isn't a whole lot of route memorization in this game. I forgot how much I hate the beginning of this chart when it's not on random. commenting uh, some of the best scores uh, not just on Twitch but just in general uh, come from when uh, players will use random to shuffle the chart um, and it is also uh, possible that some charts might be better for some players than others as QDL is hinting at like if you're really really good at doing long uh, streams of notes uh, running in scales whereas if a song has lots of back-to-back -back mashing of like three or four note chords simultaneously again depending on where your strengths lie, some songs you just might inherently be better at than others. Alright, the saddest Christmas song. That's a really, really old song. Uh, it's actually been in the game since the original arcade release. So this song is 28 versions old at this point. Sounds about right. It's, it's worth also mentioning too. Appropriate because it's the saddest Christmas song, and we're coming up on the Christmas of the saddest year for a long time. And uh, also, that song, 511, the normal chart of it uh, is often uh, touted as uh, one of the intro songs to TVX as well when we first getting started at the dinner. We're just going to keep on going down the list because we got limited time. Uh, go for a song that I've loved for a really, really long time. Uh, Setsugeka, one of Ryu Star's best entries in the series. Easily one of the best songs he's done, and also one of the harder songs, too. Uh, this was regarded as uh, being kind of a king of the hill for top songs uh, in terms of difficulty for quite a while. I mean, obviously that's changed in recent years, but I remember in the early 2000s being able to pass this song was a big deal. Uh, I see uh, Gimby Joe mentioning um, that they played a bunch of these games years ago with an imported PS2 and a uh, home controller. Yeah, so in addition to the arcade releases, um, Konami did release a bunch of these games for PS1 and PS2. Uh, the last PS2 release we saw, or home release rather, uh, was with uh, Empress version 16. Uh, there haven't been any home releases since, aside from Infinitas, uh, which Okapi's playing now, which came out for PC five years ago. Uh, but it's been quite a while uh, since we had a home release. Empress was 16, and uh, Bist Rover, the 28th version of the game, just came out last month. and fail at the same time because that is something this game will let you do 
Um, so playing with the normal bar, uh, you have to finish with 80% of your life meter to pass the song. And Konami has this really bad tendency to throw you these massive curveballs at the end of songs just to make you fail. Um, so yeah, that happened. Well, it's not always just to make you fail. I mean, if you think about most techno songs, they have a build-up towards the end. Uh, oh, but yeah, there totally are charts that have a bunch of stuff thrown at the end just to, to bait your uh, if you gauge. Also, um, Okapi was just mentioning that he got a, a brand new high score and got an A on that song while also failing it. Uh, that's one of the uh, more interesting things about 2DX and a couple of other Bimani games, uh, whether you pass or fail, is completely independent of your scoring and judgment of how you did on the song. How did I miss that triplet? Yikes. So yeah, that's a song that took me a really, really long time to pass for the first time. Like, First Samurai is just nonsense at the end. Um, it, as it should be. It was originally the uh, the boss song for Tent Style, if I remember correctly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I will be a little more chatty, but uh, again, Okapi, you're playing fantastically and I'm kind of scared to uh, jinx you from getting any more absolutely monstrous raises. Again, great stuff. Yeah, I'm, try I'm trying. Also, here's Crane Song since Cabellia mentioned it earlier. So one thing that we have in this song uh, that we haven't seen yet um, are charge notes. Uh, so back in 2DX series, the 17th version of the game, uh, Konami introduced charge notes, essentially holds, uh, where you have to press and hold the key. Um, however, you have two t uh, judgments when you initially press the charge note and at the end of it when you let go. Uh, so both initially getting the note and letting go of it you have to try to make that a uh, two-frame window for that flashing grade. Um, also, in this song, we see held charge notes. Uh, they are special charge notes where if you aren't holding the note and you let go, your uh, groove gauge will drain until you start holding the key again. Uh, those were introduced in uh, Copula, the uh, 23rd version of the game.
Yeah, that doesn't work with health charge nose damage, and you should know that. I mean, you can ignore them, but, you know, you're gonna you're gonna fail. Gonna you'll, you'll fail real bad. Yeah. Show off something that really, really hurts your arm to practice. Good ol' good old scratch charts. Cause scratch charts are painful to play for long periods of time. And you'll see why when we get to the middle of this song. So DJ Mask Madism is uh, an artist in the series that tends to do songs that are very turntable heavy. Uh, now in 2DX where you have a turntable note, uh, the red notes, if you have repeated turntable notes, you do have to scratch back and forth. Uh, there is a short uh, timing window that you have to actually be going in different directions in order for the turntable to register. So once we get into the, the real meat of the song, we're going to be seeing some really rapid scratching. And again, depending on your play style and what you're good at or what you're bad at, sometimes these charts can be an absolute nightmare for you. So, Reggie's asking about the uh, rivals. So, normally when you... Shinji. 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 Yeah, where did Shinji go? Mm. The Discord shows me transmitting, so I'm a little. Okay, well, you're back now. That's all that matters. Where was, where was I going after red? Um, uh, uh, stream man, how are we doing for time? Right, well, I'll wait for Zolathon to say something about how we're doing for time. Um, we'll st step things up a little bit. Uh, jumping into 30 minutes, oh boy. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm, uh, I'm in a different time zone than what the marathon was saying. All right. So we're going to jump into the 11s folder and start playing some slightly harder stuff. Play a, start off with a really, really fast song. And like we were mentioning, like we were mentioning earlier, uh, the difficulties go from one to twelve. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that those difficulty increases are not gradual; they are exponential. Uh, so the fact that we're going up from tens to elevens, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more denser patterns, a lot of a lot more intensity.
not spitting distance of my PB. How about that? Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Rachel was wondering if there's a name for the uh, for the character in that video. I know that she's in a lot of other songs by uh, the artist Ram, but I don't know if she's ever been given a name. Uh, I am not sure. Um, if there was ever a place to find it, um, it would be on either Remy Wiki or Jamish could just tell you. Because uh, Jamish just said it's at the Aries. Alright, uh, let's see. What else did I want to show off? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, everyone in chat can vouch for the fact that I am a huge, unapologetic Nanahira stan. Um, everyone who's in the Rhythm Game community, at least. So, here's the only Nanahira song I own. Also, Camellia, which uh, isn't half bad either. Oh, I guess. Camellia follows me on Twitter. It's pretty great. Just this song is a bop. The video is just equally silly. It's so good. Two DX has a long history of having really interesting and sometimes absolutely bizarre music videos. Uh, some might say it's just fun. Uh, I personally think it's just to try to distract you from looking at the notes. Cough. Last message. Cough. Little Babby Goat is asking if Carlos the Lion is in this game. Um, I'm not sure if we've got time to play Lion Suki, but yes, yes he is. Uh, this is the awkward moment where I have to tell you I don't have Lion Suki unlocked, and it's something that I regret daily, because that song slaps. the last note. That's a plus 200 PB. Yeah, but I missed the last note. The imposter syndrome was setting in, Shinji. <laughs> Back in the old days, Konami used to have exclusive songs to encourage you to buy the console exclusives. We got three of those in Infinitas. And this one is the best one. I'm still amazed that Infinitas has this as an exclusive song, because it's just so different than a lot of other songs in uh, Bimani's history. Like, LED is known for doing uh, a lot of similar sound in hardcore, so did those Electronica. But this just really stands out, so the fact that uh, the PC version got this as an exclusive. I'm still blown away.
Uh, one day I'll get that AAA, but today it's not that day. No regrets though, because again, Rejection Girl slaps. Such a great sound. It, yes, it really do slap. Oh, you know, while we're in the ninth folder, hey Shinji, do you like that stuff? Oh, I know what we're about to play. Do you know? Hopefully chat likes dub stuff, because that's where we're going next. I'm also an unapologetic Usao stan. I think that's one of my favorite things about Usao is that the samples he uses are just incredibly cheeky. Shabby. One of these days I'll get tired of listening to Bro Gamer, but today is definitely not that day. No, it's always a good day for Bro Gamer. Uh, Usao also has a bunch of other really good songs, but I'm trying to keep this, um, this family friendly dynamite. Not family friendly. Not in the artist. Hmm. Oh, that would explain why we're not playing Injection of Love. She, she says truck. Like, like, truck is allowed. I ran him a little further ahead than I was expecting to. So, go off the, off the rails a little bit. Play Dream and Train, because... A lot of this just looks like a nightmare to me, but then again, I also don't play singles. So I know there's a, a couple of people in chat that have said that this uh, looks intimidating or crazy, but right now Okapi's playing singles, which is seven keys and one turntable. Uh, there are some of us out there who have lost our minds that play doubles, which is 14 keys and two turntables. Uh, I, I may or may not play doubles. You say that like I don't also play doubles. You also say that like you don't owe me $500 for a controller I barely use. 
What can I say? I'm very persuasive at getting people to try out doubles. Jokes and snark aside, um, doubles is a little bit more about multitasking, uh, but it's easier to read the chart because typically voices are separated, like drums are on one hand, melodies on another, where singles, mm. everything is crammed together, and it's a lot more about reading, well, dense note charts. Yeah. And, and then we have another PB where I also failed because I decided to not hold a note that I should have held. Like, I'm, I'm feeling brave. Like, it looks like we're still doing all right on time. So I'll start running into some of the songs that I planned if we had time. This is definitely a song for Sammy Sour, please. I agree. Definitely time for sour, please. Like, I am all for expander getting uh, dirtier and filthier. a good song, but... The ending, though, is just disgusting. Like, it makes you think it's gonna keep going, and then it's just like, nope, we're done. And then it pieces out, never to be seen again. I wonder if I am the tense folder. I need to go into the nice folder for the, uh, the chat participation song that I have been trying to make a thing on my stream forever, and no one ever says speed rave when the gentleman at the end of the song asks you to say speed rave. That's very disappointing. Yeah, the MC in the song literally says, say speed rave. So, come on, say speed rave.
Okay, I see speeder rips in the chat. I'm happy. If there's one thing Naoki mastered, it was how to make music that sounds like cars going fast. I mean, that's literally the entire Eurobeat genre, which unfortunately there isn't very much of an Infinitas. Yeah, older arcade versions of uh, 2DX had a lot more Eurobeat licenses, but uh, to have those in Infinitas would mean uh, Konami would have to pay up more money to renew said licenses, and uh, yeah, we all know that's not happening anytime soon, unfortunately. But at least we get these really weird Sampling Master songs. What do you mean, uh, a weird song? I mean, just watch the video. It's just a couple of guys going on a fishing trip. Nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. Love that song. I still think the video, all these years later, sets the bar for a good 2DX video. Like, I'm pretty sure the video for Insomnia, which I'm not playing unfortunately tonight, like, is basically copy-pasted from that. Oh, absolutely. It's it's totally a spiritual success. Mm -hmm. Like, it's literally just Jakarta Punk Brothers just recreating that video. Yeah, I was, I was about to ask for time. Like, I know we're kind of, kind of coming up towards the the end, though. Just casually, just casually double A that.
Fantastic. Yeah, I wanted to say something along the lines of all of these raises, like you're doing incredible, but usually, you know, when you say that, you jinx it. Yeah, fantastic work. Oh, thank you. Um, that's a, actually a really good question that I've written down under. Um, so it really depends on the brand of the switches. Um, I have Samoa buttons in both of my controllers, but I'm using Honeywell switches, which do not hold up as well as the Omrons that Konami likes to put in the arcade machines. So I'm not sure how many they're rated for, but my three button, this one right here, is definitely starting to misfire occasionally. So I'm coming up on needing to replace them. But Omrons are expensive. Oh, surprise, Shinji. I'm gonna play your song. I'm thinking about the uh, switches. Like, how often do you think that uh, they would need to be replaced if you were uh, playing on a personal controller? Every three months if you use Honeywell switches because they're just not QC'd and as durable. Yeah, so I was going to say, I know for uh, arcade machines, um, which see a lot more play, not just because it's, you know, in public, but, you know, it's not just a single person playing it. Um, I know that those can get changed anywhere from, like, once a month to only once every three months, but I do believe a copy is right on point in talking about it depends on the quality of the uh, switches and also the resistance, too. Um, different switches have different physical resistance. Same thing for the springs that go into the, uh, below the button as well. Um, a lot of uh, 2DX players will use specific ones. Um, newer machines typically use a combination of 60 gram and 50 gram springs and switches. Uh, and then you have some people that are psychopaths like myself that use 100 gram springs and 100 gram switches. And then you have oddballs like me that use 20 gram switches with 60 gram springs. It's very much personal preference though. I was just about to say, uh, there isn't really a certain set um, spring and switch setup that you're expected to have. It really is personal preference. Not too bad at race. Again, thank you for uh, playing my unofficial theme song. That was unexpected. I mean, it was right there. It was like I had to. Hmm. All right, I had a song that I wanted to play at the very end, and so I probably should warm back up into stuff on that level. Here's another song with a fantastic video. Absolutely. Yeah, I was going to mention uh, with uh, some of the folks in chat talking about the food from Rotel to Mercury, all of the Rotel songs are just fantastic for food. <laughs> uh, talking about 2DX machines, uh, BitDK is mentioning uh, that they're probably the only one in the uh, east half of the US with a Tricoro era cab, Tricoro being the 20th version of the game. And I'm honestly trying to think now in regards to how many 2DX machines are in North America now. I know uh, back in the early 2000s when I first... Yeah, I was going to say in the early 2000s when I first started playing, literally a handful. There was only like one or two at the time. Uh, but now thanks to uh, enthusiasts like BitDecay, who just own a machine in their own private collection. Uh, but also the expansion of Round 1 arcades from Japan into the U.S., uh, we're seeing a lot more machines and a lot more access to the game, which is just really great, especially considering for years it was almost impossible to play if you were outside of Japan. Okay, well, 
we'll just like totally butcher that back strand. That's another song that just hits the ground and doesn't want to let up on you density-wise. And now I'm hitting fast again, but I'm afraid if I start messing up my offset, I'm gonna break it worse. Yeah, you could always mm. tempt fate. It's a perfect time to do so. No. Um, how are we doing on time? Uh, marathon running people. Hmm. There were like two more things that I really wanted to play. Okay, perfect. We would be time for one thing, and then the, the other two things I wanted to play, and then we'll go into the victory lap and shoutouts. Um, let's not play that on another. That's gonna go really badly. Like, there is no way I'm passing that on another today. So this song is kind of an oddity because you can butcher this song and it still sounds basically exactly the same because it's just dueling piano. It's kind of fun. This is also my theme song. Chart is super aggressive. Uh, this song is a crossover from pop and music and using lots of really rapid chords and trills. It's a little bit easier on pop and music than 2DX, but uh, they didn't really take that into account when they made the charts. Amazing song, but oof, yeah, brutal charts all the way start to finish. Chaos King talking about all the uh, random German in the videos. Uh, with each version of 2DX, um, if songs don't have custom videos, uh, there's usually a set of what are called generic videos that get used for a lot of the songs in that style. Uh, these are the uh, generics from DJ Troopers and, yeah, random German. Because. <laughs> yes, all the random German. Yeah, the, the, F's, the F's do mean dot for frick. That is absolutely true. Alright, this is the part where I start to get slightly nervous, because there's two more songs I want to play, and one of them is a 12. So we've seen everything from 9s to 11s so far. Things are about to get a little nutty. Just a bit. Buckle up, everybody.
it at the end. But that song is quite difficult, and I only recently started passing it. And even though you might have quote unquote lost it, getting that close to a, a grade A on a 12 is incredibly impressive. I tried. See, so yeah, like, and that is far and away considered the easiest 12 in the game. And it also kind of circles back to what um, Shinji was talking about earlier, where, um, like, players have different skill sets. Like, that is a 12 that I can pass because it's very streamy and it plays into a lot of my strengths as a player. There are a lot of 11s and a handful of 10s that will still kind of push me down face first in the snow and then make fun of me. So... That's kind of that. Um, so I think this is going to be our last song, time permitting. My absolute favorite song from when I first started playing the game many, many years ago. salty that the only combo break was me literally missing the one key. Like, that was almost a triple-A, almost a PFC. I haven't triple a this song in probably four years. But hey, whatever. Yeah, exactly, MG. I'm forever getting bullied by this game. Um... Uh, how are we doing on time? Uh, do I need to turn uh, off? Two, I'd say it's like probably two or three minutes left. Um, okay, let me Alright, cool. Well, um... Shinji, if you want, want to talk about the, um... If you want to talk about, uh, Gold Cup's Guide to getting into the game, uh, I have something topical and appropriate. All right. So um, if you are curious about this game, um, I do see uh, Dr. Z's in chat asking about this game. So this is Beat Mania 2DX. This version in specific is Infinitas. It is a home version for PC that Konami put out. Um, it is available for you to play. And I say that because uh, there's an amazing guide put together uh, by Cold Cuts, uh, another 2DX streamer called Infiticon. I just dropped that into chat. Uh, if you Google Infiticon, you'll find it. It is a complete walkthrough on how to get started in Infinitas, from registering on Konami's website, downloading and installing the game, literally everything, screenshots and all. It is a complete walkthrough on how to get started with Infinitas. Uh, there is a demo version available if you do want to try it out um, and you know, want to make sure it works and runs before you uh, give Konami any of your hard-earned money. But uh, if you are interested in 2DX or Infinitas, I highly recommend checking out that guide, um, as it also has a couple of links uh, to some of the communities and other folks that do stream this. Um, as uh, I just mentioned, Cold Cuts, another great streamer that helps uh, stream for the community and run a lot of events. I know there are some other shout outs 
that Okapi might want to be doing, but uh, I'll try to leave those uh, for the man in the spotlight. Thank you for playing. Thank you, Superstar Mitsuru. Alright, so... That is everything that I have uh, to show you guys today. Um, uh, first and foremost, um, thank you to um, Really Really Longathon for spawning in at the last minute to fill some dead air. Uh, it's always fun to show this game off to new communities. Um, Big thank you to um, Shinji for stepping in, uh, also relatively last minute, to uh, help me with commentary and stuff. Um, big thanks to uh, my partner, Cafe Kaval, one of my biggest cheerleaders in the game. Um, my friend Kat, um, big mentor, huge help. Uh, Dotface, Sparkover, um, Jamich, um, Crappuccino. Like, so many great people in this community that have pushed me and cheered me on and give me advice. Uh, super wholesome community. If this game even at all faintly interests you, definitely, if you live near around one, go check it out there. Uh, you will not find very many people who will not help you get started in this game. Um, that's all I got. Uh, I am Okapi, twitch.tv slash just underscore Okapi. I stream occasionally. Um, Shinji16, uh, he streams in the mornings, he plays doubles, he's really good, check him out too. Uh, that is gonna do it for me guys, thank you so much for hanging out, I love you all, and I will see you in the future, maybe.